Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in this video, I'm going to share with you nine ways to beat a pitcher. Now, obviously, the best outcome that we can achieve at the plate is to get a base hit, right? And it's even better if we can get an extra base hit, if we can crush a double or a triple or a home run, maybe get some RBIs, right? That's the best outcome, but unfortunately, that's not something that's in our control. And I'm a big believer, I always preach on this channel about, you know, you need to focus on what you can control, control the controllables. So that means having productive at bats, hitting the ball hard, doing something to position your team uh, to win the ball game, right? That's really at the end of the day what it comes down to. So I wanted to share with you nine ways in today's video where you can still have a productive at bat and help your team win without necessarily getting a base hit. I think you're gonna like this one. Let's get started. So the first way to have a productive at bat is obviously what we just talked about and that's getting a base hit. Anytime you get a base hit, clearly that's a productive at bat. Number two though is hit the ball hard. If you hit the ball hard, you won. You beat the pitcher, right? Uh, you know, a lot of times you can hit the ball right on the screws. Let's say you crush a line drive to left center, deep left center, and the center fielder jogs over there and he makes an incredible diving play and the crowd's erupting. And you know, at that point, all you gotta do is tip your cap. But believe me, in that situation, the pitcher is not gonna feel like he beat you just because he got you out. He's not gonna feel like, you know, he's ahead of you. The next time that you come up he's gonna remember who you are and you know if that was the third out of the inning that's gonna be one of those where he walks off the mound and he's shaking his head thinking man I'm glad this innings over right so hitting the ball hard should be the goal because that's something that you can control once the ball leaves your bat you have no control over what the defense does they might make a great play and in that scenario just tip your cap and move on to the next at bat but don't think that you failed or that you you know didn't beat the pitcher if you hit the ball hard that has to be the goal and that's the second way to have a productive at bat. Another way to have a productive at bat is to drive it a run. So whether that be obviously a base hit, that counts, but I'm talking about specifically a sack fly. So if there's a run around third base, less than two outs, and you hit a deep fly ball and you score that run, hey, that's a sack fly, and you're moving your team one inch closer to winning that ball game, right? So that's definitely a productive at bat. Be a team player, put your team first, Think through situations when you're at the plate and have a plan for what you're trying to do, right? But a base hit works there. A sack fly also works there as well. That's a productive at bat. How about the next one? A sacrifice bunt to move runners over, right? Let's say there's a runner on first base and you move them over into scoring position or runners on first and second, and now you got two guys in scoring position because you executed the bunt and you got it down uh, and you did your job. Again, baseball is a team sport. That's a great way to help your team get in a better position to win. I know bunting is kind of a lost art these days. A lot of players, you know, kind of him and haw when they when their third base coach puts down the bunt sign. But you know, if you want to play at a high level, bunting is a fun fundamental that you just absolutely need to master. So work on your bunting and when you get a bunt sign in a game, don't shake your head or anything like that. The best thing you can do is execute it. So get a good pitch to bunt, right? And lay that bunt down. Don't pop it up or anything like that. Lay it down, get it close to the line and advance your runners. That's really gonna help your team out. Number five is moving a runner into scoring position. So you can obviously do this by laying down a bunt, which we just talked about, but there are lots of different ways you can move a runner into scoring position. If there's a runner on first base, maybe it would be you hit a really deep fly ball. Sometimes you see that and it's enough where the guy on first can tag and advance into scoring position. So anytime you can do that, you know, scoring position is called scoring position for a reason. A base hit is gonna score that run. And again, it's all about, you know, baseball is a simple game, get more runs than the other team. And it Anytime that you can get your team closer to that ultimate goal, you're being a team guy and uh, you're really putting together productive at bat. So anytime you move a runner, count it. Another thing that can classify as a productive at bat is you know an eight plus pitch at bat. And you can have your own team goals. So you can kind of do eight pitches or I've seen nine pitches, 10 pitches. You can even segment it into, okay, any at bat that's over six pitches and the ball is then put in play and that's the end result of the at bat, then that's a productive at bat. Or you know it could be eight plus pitches. And even if you swing and miss and you strike out, that's still a productive at bat, okay? And this one's interesting. A lot of people don't think, well, I can strike out and still have a productive at bat. But if you really think about what's going on, let's say that you see eight pitches, right? But what that's doing is number one, you're getting the opposing pitcher's pitch count up. And a lot of times, if you can, get, the quicker you can get to the bullpen, the better off your team is gonna be, the better chance that you guys are gonna win that ball game, right? So getting into the bullpen is absolutely huge, burning through pitchers, right? But what's happening on your side of things, your pitcher 
and your teammates are getting more rest, right? Because they're not out there playing defense right now. They're in the dugout, they're resting. So that's awesome there. And your teammates are also, you know, getting to see multiple pitches. So imagine if you had this at bat, this eight or nine pitch at bat in the first inning. This is when you guys are trying to, you know, really feel this pitcher out and see what pitches he throws. And by the time you get to eight or nine pitches, you've probably seen everything. So that's great for you for future at bats because, you know, it's easier to hit when you've seen everything that this guy can throw. It's also easier for your teammates, makes hitting a lot, a lot better for them um, if they can, you know, see more pitches. So overall, that's, you know, ideally it'd be awesome to have an eight or nine or 10 pitch at bat and then finish it with a base hit or putting the ball in play. But even on a strikeout, that's still a productive at bat um, because you're, you're giving your, your team a huge advantage when you do that. That. Another way to have a productive at bat is three pitches, three plus pitches after two strikes. So two strike hitting is tough. Anytime you can be a warrior up there, you can battle in the batter's box. Um, that's definitely a productive at bat. Again, same things we just talked about. You are seeing more pitches. You're getting his pitch count up. You're allowing your teammates to see more pitches. So overall, you know, getting to two strikes is tough. Ideally, you know, you put the ball and play hard somewhere. Ideally, you get a base hit. But even if you don't, you know, if you see three plus pitches after two strikes, I think good things are going to happen for you and for your team. And then the last two for this video is a walk. Obviously, that's a productive at bat and hit by pitch. So a walk, you know, obviously it's more fun to get hits, right? But a walk shows that, hey, you're making that pitcher work. You're having good plate discipline. You're not swinging at bad pitches. So take your walks when they come, all right? And then hit by a pitch. Obviously, that's one of those things that you can't really control, but wear it. You know, run down to first base hard and, you know, it's, it's setting the table for your teammates to, you know, advance you into scoring position and then drive you in. And again, baseball is a simple game. The more runs you can get, the better likelihood of winning the ball game, right? So these are just a few ways that you can have a productive at bat while not necessarily getting a base hit. Obviously, hitting the ball hard should be our main focus. We want to get base hits. We want to get doubles and triples and home runs. But at the end of the day, baseball is a team sport. And the most important thing is we want to have productive at bats. I'm telling you, the more productive at bats you have, the more personal accolades are going to be there. All the hits and all of the RBIs and the batting average, all of that will come if you focus on the productive at bat component, okay? So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week, and I don't want you to miss them. And last thing, hitters. I put together a free resource for you. I think you're really going to like it. It's called the Contact Point Checklist. And what I've done is I've freeze-framed the swing at the point of contact and I've highlighted a few key things that you want to make sure that your swing has at the point of contact as well to really maximize you know your bat speed and your power and your batting average all of that good stuff so I think it's going to be useful to you you can download it 100% for free by just clicking on the link down below in the description I'll also put that link in the comment section as well thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time